All right, uh, hello all. Uh, this is continue on on Arch Linux security or Arch Linux hardening. Um, and a few things I do before setting up a GUI. So the last video I talked about dmcrypt on a logical volume unit pro, um, partition through logical volume management. Uh, so I'm just going to continue uh, from where we left off. I just logged in as my regular user, set up the date, time, and uh, network, and all that sort of stuff. So um, what I like to do before installing a GUI or anything like that is uh, lock down the uh, core dump. As I mentioned before, it is possible for an attacker to get information from a core dump. So uh, you just do a sudo, I'm so sorry, nano etsy uh, sys, system d core dump dot clnf, press enter. All right, so here is storage, just press delete once and uh, take out the word external and type in none, the word none. And write that out and exit. Okay, and then uh, just issue sudo system ctl daemon reload. All right, so that'll uh, restrict the core dump, period. It won't uh, be loaded at all, okay? Another thing I found interesting was sysctl. If you ls etsy sysctld, there's nothing in there. However, they in they are in the USR uh, lib. And I found the simplest way is to do a sudo sysctl um, two dashes system, and it'll kick in. And applying uh, rules, uh, the uh, core dump config and uh, a, a default configuration which you can see it's printed out on the screen so it's pretty handy it gives you a, a printout and from reading the documentation it, um, if you put the uh, rules into Etsy uh, sys, sys control D those will be the, um, precedent over the USR lib so I thought well you might as well just copy those so copy as uh, pseudo though Copy slash USR lib uh, sys um, sys control D. Uh, I'm also just do. There's only two uh, two rules. So 50 dash core dump to uh, slash Etsy sys control dot D. And do the same for the other one. 50 default. There we go. Now we do run that sudo sysctl dash dash system. What happens? You'll see it'll spit out the ones. Now instead of the USR V8 uh, lib, they're now in Etsy syscontrol dot D. Okay, so I'll clear the screen and do that one more time, so you can see. Okay, so that's already uh, locked down some of the system just by doing that. Okay. And there's another one, um, it's on the Arch Linux documentation. Uh, this is part of the kernel hardening. Is uh, The kernel laws can contain useful information for an attacker to exploit kernel vulnerabilities such as sensitive uh, memory addresses. Um, the only thing that's a little confusing is that, not the instructions, but the sentence, the kernel dot d message underscore restrict flag was to forbid I don't know that if it's not. In any case, um, you can create a rule just by typing in nano uh, and then etsy pseudo nano and then uh, this line and then uh, put this and then reload the system uh, CTL. So basically, pseudo, you're going to create a new file <laughs> nano uh, etsy sys ctl.d and then got to be careful 50 dash d m e s g dash restrict i don't think it yeah restrict dot c o n f and just to put that in kernel uh dot d m e s g underscore restrict equal uh put a put a space there equal one write that out and exit 
So if I do a D message right now, uh, on a VGA, it shows me what's ha happening. Now if I apply the rule, dash system, you'll see that it, the D message restricts. So let's try that again. Operation permitted. The only way I can use that, uh, do that is as sudo or as root as a user. Now it spits out the information. All right. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is it also kind of ties in with the TCP uh, stack protocol um, hardening. Okay, so that's dealt with um, some some lockdown. We already have the system encrypted, the whole disk, and now we've locked down some of the kernel parameters uh, from any, hopefully from any kind of malicious intent. Uh, so I wanted to look at the IP tables, and this is for like if you're not using your computer as a NAT gateway or something, uh, just as a desktop, single desktop user, you can uh, implement IP tables. Now, since there's a lot of rules, and I'll put the uh, link in the description um, that you can implement, I made a, just a simple script file to execute it once, and I threw it on GitHub, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. Uh, just one second, I'll be back. Okay, so it's a, on my uh, GitHub username called Sim fire <laughs> it's basically simple stateful firewall uh, so if I change directory to that sim underscore firewall ls is a readme or you can look at it so nano firewall sh and the idea is you initialize IP tables for uh, capital N TCP and IP tables again for UDP and there's also a service that you do and this is a script and uh, IP tables and it's a long set of uh, scripts so I'm gonna get out of here all right uh, apologies uh, it should be uh, when you chmod that to it should be sudo chmod user group plus X and firewall and then sudo firewall and if it all went well nothing will come back it's already saved it to the uh, IP tables directory Etsy IP tables uh, and then the rules. So if you look look at that, is uh, nano Etsy IP table tables IP tables dot rules. There they all there. So I'll change directory and sudo system ctl enable IP tables service. Now I'm not sure if it'll complain if I try to start it without restarting the system. Nope. Okay, and then uh, system CTL status IP tables. It's all happy. All right, so now I feel a little more safer, or you can feel a little more safer. I mean, uh, Linux itself is inherently fairly safe, um, but you know, if you can become a target. It is possible. It's plausible, I guess. Uh, but you know, more towards a company if they decide to use Linux and uh, Arch Linux in uh, especially. So um, what I'm going to do is just install a desktop environment and uh, try to wrap this up because I don't want to bore you to death with the, all this uh, security stuff. So I'll be back in a second. All right, so I'm back obviously and uh, I've installed the uh, desktop, XFCE4 desktop along with Fire Jail and fire tools and basically sandbox firefox and other applications there are rules so um, you, the GUI I like to have uh, to look at the tools and you can also run it so we'll start up firefox I've already set it up um, the way I like it and then we can go to tools and you'll see the process ID and set comp it's enabled and blacklist a whole bunch of things when it's running what I like to do though is that you just click on the icon that'll minimize in the tray is uh, open uh, a terminal and, and on a new installation uh, you can ls.local share and there's an application sometimes there's not an applications folder so there is one anyway if not just make one and I just do a copy uh, slash USR, um, so I'm so sorry, USR share applications Firefox 
dot desktop to dot local share uh, let me do the whole path just in case home username dot local share applications and we'll go to our home folder and go to dot that dot local folder share applications and there's uh, the Firefox so we'll just open this with leadpad and we're going to name it Firefox firewall and control F and find exec there's a few of them but this is the first one we want exec equals and just replace not replace just add in a space and then fire jail save exit I'm going to rename this F2 Firefox fire wall and it just crashed so let me see let's look at our internet there we go Firefox firewall and we'll look at our process ID and you can see that it's running okay and let's change the process ID from before okay so I've talked about fire uh, fire jail before uh, in a previous uh, video but uh, just to give you an idea and it does work with chromium a little it's a little strange though you can install chromium it should pick it up and there we go just to show you there's chromium running in uh, sandbox mode okay uh, the reason I said it's funny is sometimes it'll keep asking you want to make it the default browser and when you if you say yes it'll keep asking you that with fire jail uh, but if you don't um, if you don't run it at, with the fire jail it doesn't it will remember your settings I'm not sure what's going on with that but uh, in any case you can run it in uh, with that if you wish to uh, Google Chrome I'm not so sure it's a little uh, off as well but that gives you an idea a couple of browsers I'm not sure about any other ones you have to look okay so moving along uh, TCP IP stack hardening the following parameters to tighten network security options for the, of the kernel for IP4 protocol and related IPv6. So I only use IPv4. And uh, basically, what you do is you put them into your, uh, what I mentioned, uh, the syscontrol uh, document uh, rules. Uh, I think, believe it's 50, the 50 rules. Okay, so we'll do a pseudo leave pad just to make sure that was it and yeah they are you put them in here you can see there's already IP specifications put in here and basically what you do is just take the relevant information and you just copy and paste so I would put in the uh, the description as well TCP SNY cookie protection default I'm not sure if that's in so you can like copy for example open the document and control F and paste that in string not found so we'll just uh, press enter a couple of times and for example take this top one like I said to give it a description copy and paste it in press enter and just take this IP4 net uh, SNY cookies equals one paste that in I'm going to save and quit because I don't want to go through the whole thing. If you don't have IP6, remember to just leave that out. We just do that sudo sysctl dash dash system. You should see it here in the uh, message output right here. Net IP board TCP SNY cookies equals one. Okay, so what you do is you just go through this, copy and paste them into the uh, D message, um, sorry, the 50 default config and reload sys the uh, sys uh, d sorry there's a lot of jargon <laughs> i'm going through here okay so i hope you uh hope that makes sense to you i know it's a lot of it's a bit of a hassle and there's more information on uh, if you use uh virtual memory uh, swap file and more for i guess uh raid i believe and uh that's pretty much everything I can think of the kernel hardening I already went through is just this one the other ones are kind of useless as, it, as you can see 
and hide PID. That's kind of neat. Uh, you can get that too. I think, uh, let me see, pack, paste what I just copied in. There we go. That's it. You don't do anything. It'll just, uh, you can read through it if you want to. And what it does, it just hides the process ID from non um, privileged users, I guess. Yeah, it hides uh, processes of users, of un unprivileged users by mounting proc. So it'll automate it, as it says here. And one really quick mention, Clip Manager, like I mentioned before, a Clipboard Manager. See all the stuff I copied and pasted. If I had a copy of the password, a password, it may be vulnerable. So what I do is just click Clear. And if you go to, uh, if this is Parcel It, you go to Preferences, the very bottom, just untick conform, Confirm Before Clearing History, so you don't have to. That's up to you, though. Okay, so I think that's... Pretty much everything with the exclusion of Linux uh, GR security. Uh, that's a really tricky one for just a desktop user to use. But I think you get the idea. Um, passwords, strong passwords, and locking down certain aspects, and locking some ports, and so on. All right, so that should cover this series, uh, part three. That should be the end of this, and you're probably saying thank you. <laughs> And that should do it for this one. And any ideas, please let me know. And again, always, as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you soon. And bye for now.